In this video, we will see about a Sonic architecture which is developed by the Microsoft Azure project. This is mainly used in the data center. So here, in this video, we are going to see about the main components. So we will see the overview components between user space, kernel space and the hardware. Overall component and architecture of Sonic we are going to see. In the upcoming videos, we will see how to compile and install and test as well. We will start. So the basic blocks in Sonica, in user space, you will have containers. So that containers will be used for routing, used for port, uh, port information and database. To store all this information, we have a container. And then we have a kernel space to handle all the platform drivers and network drivers and as well as ASIC driver. And then we have a third component, which is a hardware, which can control the fan, power LEDs, ASIC, etc. So, we will see a diagram to understand this. So, as discussed, this classified into user space. This one. And this is the kernel space. And this is the hardware. So, now as you see, there are more components only in the user space. And now we will see each container, how it is working. So, all these are running as a docker. So, that is why we name it as a docker container. Once the system is up, you can see these containers separately. So now we will see. In DHCP relay container, what it does is, it has a DHCP relay. It enables relaying of the DHCP request. So that is the main operation of this DHCP relay. Next one is PMON container. So PMON is actually, it will probe the hardware for the detail and get the sensor logs for reading. Example, alarms, fan, everything. Like these details we will get in the PMON container. That is the main function functionality of the PMON container. The next one is the SNMP container. So this ha has SNMPD as well as agent. So this handles all type of SNMP packets. That is the main operation of this SNMP. Then we have LLDP. This is nothing but the link layer discovery protocol. So any link un updation will be reported from the kernel to the LLDP container and this will handle this. So this has different modules, LLDPD, Manager as well as, as well as SYNCD. Why we have SYNCD is, this has to communicate with the SYNCD. The SYNCD will in turn communicate to the ASIC. If you see this diagram, the only link which is connected to ASIC is SYNCD. So any communication has to go to ASIC through SYNCD. So that's why we have the SYNCD here. Then we have a BGP container. It is actually not only BGP, it will run all the routing protocols. It is actually routing stack, full routing stack. This runs the FRR stack. So you can run OSPF, BGP, everything in this container. Then we have TMD. TMD is nothing but Linux based lag. So it is an open source lag which is already present in Linux. That is running in this container, TMD. So as you see, all these are applications. So that's why it is here. And all these three modules down, one, two, three, four, all the four modules here helps, enables to configure the kernel as well as the hardware. So, we will see them. SWSS is nothing but switch state service, which as you know, in a switch, we will have to maintain the FPM tables, port, neighbor, everything. So, that is why we have port, INTF, sync, D, neighbor, like that. Then, we also have ARC agent to pass on the configurations, VLAN interface. All these are handled by the switch. So, these are all the kernel related states of the switch. So this has to be given to SyncD and SyncD will sync this to the ASIC driver. So that is the main functionality of the switch D container. So as discussed, SyncD is to communicate between the switch state and the ASIC driver. So it has SI API. So this can be portable to any hardware driver which is supported by the SI. Next we have a database container. Here all the informations in the applications are stored here. Mainly for routing protocol you have route, neighbor, everything. Then all the configurations are also stored in the DB, in the config DB. And the states of the protocol, state of the port, everything is also stored in the state DB. Like the different DBs are there. For stats everything is stored in the DB. So this is the Redis server. And all these protocols or all these containers communicate with this database server to push the data to the ASIC chip. And then we have CLI to configure 
all the required configuration. So this is the overall view of the user space and all these will be communicated to the platform driver as per the hardware and network drivers whatever we are supporting. So this is the overall view. In the next video, we will see how to configure, how to compile and do everything and we will try to have a hands-on. Thank you.